Hello, we are the Stripes, uh, and you're watching us on IndieBuddy.com. Well, uh, we started writing the record sort of beginning of last year, and uh, we sort of came with about 20, 25 songs because uh, we'd sort of spent a bit of time at home. We hadn't been on the road too much, and um, I mean, it was just sort of it it had come back around to the new cycle, and we had to obviously get a new record going. Um, and we basically over the summer just did a couple of days of recording demos uh, in the UK um, and then through that we kind of found the producer for the record, um, Ethan Johns. We were all massive fans of and who we've had a connection with uh, over the last couple of years but we never actually got to work with. Um, and then we ended up doing the album in Rockfield uh, in, in Wales which is a legendary studio and a lot of our favourite records were done there. Uh, like. Uh, Dave Edmonds' whole career was sort of based there, and yeah. some of the Doctor Feelgood records were done there as well. And it's actually uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was recorded in that room as well. The piano's still there, so it's sort of a place you know f full of full of history. And uh, so we we recorded it in November, um, pretty much live uh, in in about four weeks. We got it all uh, recorded and, and mixed. So yeah, that's kind of the, the whole the basic journey of the album. I suppose you just get more impatient <laughs> really that it'll come out more than that and even like the singles and stuff like that when you're kind of the, the build up to all that kind of kicking up again because you kind of you get so used to the song that like some of the songs as Josh was saying recorded like the start of last year or demo the start of last year so I mean in our minds they're really familiar old songs and we're thinking Jesus nobody actually does know these yet like you know when we start doing the gigs and stuff like that so I mean yeah you get a sense of impatience maybe and we probably had the longest rest we'd had in years <laughs> you know we had a couple of months at home which was, you know, really good. So it was a double-edged thing of, you're impatient, but you're also enjoying watching telly. We're massively delighted and relieved that it's finally out and we can get back to the, the heavy touring schedule that we're sort of used to. We've a load of stuff come up over the summer with the festivals and that, and then you know, tours and that booked for later on in the year. So we're just yeah, really excited that it's out and the reaction it's got so far has been amazing. We're really delighted that people seem to really be enjoying it and reviews have been really good and people have been buying it and it's, it's fantastic. We're really, really delighted. Yeah, um, it was, <laughs> sorry, it was, it's, it, it's the first time we've actually done a record in one go. Um, the, the last two records were done sort of on the road whilst we were on the road doing gigs. Um, so we kind of go into the studio for three or four days and then we'd be on the road for a week and we'd come back in for three or four days. Um, whereas this time around we went in with without an album and came out with a full album mixed. So it was like, I think it actually you know benefited the record a, a, you know, a, a whole part because you know, we were in that sort of mode for four four weeks, you know, we didn't get to go home and sort of like get like stew over it and second guess ourselves or anything like that. And so we were just in album mode for like four weeks. Um and as well then actually just getting the live energy out onto a onto the, you know, record was something that we've always wanted to do, you know, and, and we feel like is the sort of the best thing about the band is the live show and, and the energy that comes off that. And trying to convert that over to a record can be difficult. So we were very fortunate this time around with Ethan. Um, I mean, he's kind of like he's kind of based in like making live records and live sounding records. So um, it was a it was quite a good partnership. Um, so yeah, we did we did most of the tracks live. I mean, most of the vocal takes are live, and it's all us in the room, you know, jamming it out. And there's obviously bits of overdubs as well. But it was definitely the first time that we feel that we've captured the the, the energy of the band. Massively so, yeah. I think again that's what Ethan Jones brought to it. He brought a level of sophistication that we wouldn't have been used to before. And uh, but even when we were again the sort of main difference between this album and the last few is that myself and I have written quite a bit more. We got kind of bitten by the bug, and uh, we demoed a lot. And kind of the, the songs were very much well rounded. We'd actually toured them slightly as well. We played them live a few times, so that wasn't something that we'd be able to do in other albums where we kind of we would have to kick them into shape and really knew what we wanted to do going into the album. So that's why we were able to do it in a month, have the whole album recorded and mixed in a month. Because we knew exactly how all the songs sounded and how we all wanted them to be executed. It was just a matter of actually doing it. So um, yeah, any any sophistication is, is Ethan John's fault. <laughs> we're not <laughs> just to get people, as you can tell. So yeah, we're just glad. If, yeah, if, if it's sophisticated, brilliant. That's great. Nick, okay. Nick, Nick, yeah. Nick, 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 lots of people. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's that's a very hard one to answer. You know, where the actual melodies themselves, physically, the melodies themselves come from us. Yeah, yeah. Diagram. Yeah. Um, I I think it was just you know. Particularly with this record, um, you know, we've always been very heavily influenced by people like Elvis Costello and Nick Lowe and, and Squeeze and uh, they all 
you know, they've, they've, they've kind of got this knack for writing incredibly catchy pop melodies, you know, but to really aggressive, you know, songs, really aggressive, credible, you know, tunes. And, and that was something that we, you know, we've always been massively influenced by. And I suppose it's just never been put to the forefront or whatever, of, you know, what we do. And But this time around, I think as well, because we, we, we actually got some time to, like, live in a normal capacity and not be on the road that we you know were able to spend more time at writing and you know uh, i guess maybe yeah just just take more time out to actually come up with songs as opposed to like trying to write songs on the road and and having no real experience to write about you know apart from being on the road which nobody can fucking relate to. it's part of the craft of songwriting but if you hack away long if you would come up with a nice sort of simple melody and something that we found as well is that you can throw chords to something until it sounds great, but if you really good melody over as little chords as possible is, is quite a winning formula. It's something we quite liked going into the album, the idea of keeping it very simple, even in terms of chord structure and all that as well. There's a few songs, obviously, it's, it's not the most perfect maximum in the world. Like there is songs in the album that are very complicated as well, which, which works on stuff, but the idea of simplicity and nice melody is something you can't really beat. Uh, yeah, well, I'd say the third track, which is Need a Bit From Holiday, is probably my favourite, because it was the first one the two of us kind of jammed out together. And it was kind of at the start of the whole cycle of coming up with songs for the album, so I have a lot of affection for it for that reason. And musically, it's very much my type of thing. It's very urgent and aggressive and all that. Uh, my favourite is a track called Different Kind of Tension uh, that was lifted from a Buzzcocks album. I just thought that was a good title and said I'll come up with a song for that. But it sort of filled the fantasy of like a Brendan Benson type sort of really simple, there's only verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, end sort of thing. Really, really simple song that I sort of was delighted I came up with and on to my favourite because of that. Um, it was probably great expectations for me, um, just because like growing up, I was such a massive like classic rock fan because of my dad, and my dad like was like big into like the ACDC and Tin Lizzy and bands like that, and it's very film and it influenced, and so to be able to get a track like that on a record like this and it to fit in, and you know, uh, just the fact that there's like we got a sax solo in there somewhere as well, like it means a lot to me. So um, yeah, that's that's my favorite one. Uh, Grin and Bear for me. No reason, just I like it. Same <laughs> uh, story to the film. Yeah, well, that song is very old. It's uh, one that I've been working on since about 2014. Class. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think I was about six years old one summer when. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, the uh, yeah, uh, it was about. It was actually. For, uh, it was around uh, in the batch of songs for the second album, and just didn't work out. And it went through about every conceivable treatment and genre. As I went through, just the riff was the constant thing, and we kept doing it in all these different ways. And uh, it was originally then the demo, uh, the demo that I did that I presented to the lads for it then, uh, as an idea for the album, was it done in a kind of a New York Dolls, kind of punky, kind of thrashy, like very Johnny Thunder influence kind of way. It's very unlike it, I thought. Yeah, 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 <laughs> out, out, out of character, uh, and uh, yeah, so it was kind of in that kind of vein, and uh, we were we were rehearsing it like that, and it was kind of part of the there was like twenty twenty five songs. That were in the running for the album, and it wasn't until like Ethan heard it, then the idea came of doing it in sort of like you know a Doctor John kind of way, which like you know we'd love all that sort of stuff as well, and it was like a really kind of meeting of the two kind of concepts. And then the engineer at the studio, the assistant, had a load of really interesting tape loops that he collected over the years, and so we kind of dived into that and like got different sound effects and tried to create a kind of an atmosphere, kind of piece. Because then it's kind of the riff suited that sort of you know as you say you know slow kind of foreboding theme and uh, then also uh, stuck for lyrics then Ethan wrote the third verse which is quite cool mm. and his name is on the credits and we did the whole thing live in the live room in, 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 the, in, the, in the studio there was no separation or anything it was all of us stood together on this little sort of platform and Ethan even played guitar yeah. through a little matchbox amp like a match a bo- an amp actually made it a cigarette box, cigarette box. yeah and, and it was fed into <laughs> fed into like you know pedals and amps and like bigger stuff from there and so it was really interestingly done Josh played through an old tape recorder yeah, uh, the only drums on the track are actually we turned some of the toms on their side, and I played them with, you know, big like orchestral like timpani kind of uh, things. It's certainly the weirdest we've ever <laughs> been. In, or I say weird, like most experiments we've been in the studio with, with, with a track like that. The most sort of, but we just threw everything we knew out of the windows and right, we're just going and bat away like that. But that was Ethan uh, as well, majorly. Um, it's something that we've, I think we've neglected over the years. It's like actually coming up with parts for tracks, uh, mm-hmm. particularly with like solos and that I used to just go in and like just see what happened or whatever and he was very much uh, you know he was a big part of getting like 
he we we jam out the song and he'd go, oh, I really like that like bass line. Oh, I really like that you know little your know, chordal thing you did there. Like try and refine that and 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 you know I think that's why the record sounds so tight is because there's actual genuine parts worked out. Um, and but yeah, it, it actually it really like helped. In, 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 my, in my case, it really helped my playing because it really made me rethink recording and how to actually approach, you know, layering guitars and all that sort of stuff. It sort of seemed kind of obvious that a big for a Bo Diddy rave up song it was a good rest, a good way to end the album, and like it didn't really fit anywhere else. In the, we couldn't put it in the beginning or the middle or to the latter half. It just that just sounds like the perfect album end song. Yeah. Yeah. It's always nice to yeah, end on a kind of a wig out like that. Yeah. Then you're kind of structured. It's kind of similar to like a live set that yeah. you want to kind of maybe go out on some sort of a high and so that seemed appropriately kind of manic. It's very much a case of trying to make a, a, a full record, you know, like actually make an album because not a lot of people really pay attention to that anymore and Ethan was big on that so like we did treat the track listing as if it was a vinyl, you know, mm, so like yeah, it'd yeah. be like ending side one with like Great Expectations, I think that's what the vinyl is, ending side one with Great Expectations, yeah, so yeah. like that's the way, that's why it flows like it does is because we wanted it to, to sound like a like a like, like sound great on vinyl. It's a game of two halves. That's it. And as, as I've said as well, we always sort of with all the albums we've done, all three, uh, we've always sort of tailored like a set. You know, the idea that like you start strong, you have two or three, if you plow through, then it goes down for a bit. You have sort of a, a mood, a mood, a mood shifter. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you come back up and end on a big roary shouty track. And it's kind of as well the album sort of harkens back to like the bluesiness of the fucking of the fucking. <laughs> no, I want a, I want a pointless. Don't say it the next time. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so like just the the last the set down the song like that was kind of like you know the bodily bluesiness that we would sort of already done quite up to that point in our career. That's what we're known for as well. Is that sort of bluesy swampiness. It's really hard and really easy at the same time. Yeah, you need to uh, you need to carve out uh, a clear direction and a clear idea of what kind of band you want to be. I think pretty early doors that how you look, what you want to sound like, how you want to kind of present yourself to people is very important and that you don't do, if you look at what all the other bands around you are doing, don't do what they're doing. It's Steel Everton as well at the same time though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just be Steel. committed to it. It's, it's commitment. Like it's, it's like, the reason we got really good as a live band it was that we practiced all the time and that we played gigs all the time and that's actually, if you want, if you want to be in a good band, like that's literally the only thing is like practice as much as possible. Like there's no real shortcut to it. Like, you just have to play it a load. <laughs> and the best fun is when you start a band as well and do your first Rafter gigs. That is always the that is always the peak enjoyment to being in the band when it's totally new. And it's brilliant. We've got a load of gigs come up. This is fantastic. So enjoy it as well when you start a band. The best, it's as good as it's gonna get. It's only gonna go downhill from there. Yeah. Thanks for doing the interview. Well, yeah. if the so album, buy the album. The yeah. only one I love the album or it'll be the most expensive frisbee you ever bought. And we're playing in Wales on the twenty first and twenty second of December. We are it's on sale Friday.